In this example, we'll build a quadratic model to fit data and then make some predictions based on that model. So first, we're going to take this data that we're given, which tracks the gas mileage of a car based on its speed. So in the first column, we have our speed given in miles per hour. In the second column, we have the mileage given in miles per gallon. And we're going to compare these two, considering speed to be the x variable and mileage to be y. So we're assuming that the gas mileage depends on its speed rather than the other way around. So the first part of the question asks us to graph this data using a graphing calculator, and then we'll find a quadratic model that fits the data. So let's go over to the calculator and see how to plot the data first. Before we can plot it, we need to enter the data. So again, hit the stat button, and the very first option is edit. Now I've already entered the data here, but if it weren't entered, we would enter the x values in the first list in L1, and then use the right arrow key to move over to list two, and enter the data values for gas mileage there. So now that the data is entered, we can plot it. And again, this will use the stat plot option, which is the second option on this upper left key, y equals. So we'll hit second, stat plot. This first plot is already turned on, but if we hit enter, we go into this option menu where we can turn it on and select the type of plot. It's already selected to be a scatter plot. It's already turned on, so we don't actually have to do anything here. Now, before we go to graph it, we should go to the window menu and set the scale so that we'll be able to see our data. So on the window menu, I've already set these values as well. But if you look at the speed values, they go from 15 up to 75. So I decided to go all the way from 0 to 80. But as long as you went from, say, 10 to 80, you would be sure that you would see all of those x values. And then the y values go from 22 up to about 30. Um, so I decided to include from 0 to 40 just to make sure we can see all of those. And then the x scale and y scale just determine how often there are tick marks on this graph, uh, which isn't quite as important. But now if we go to graph it, we'll see the data laid out. And notice that it more or less follows that parabolic arc. There's a little bit of deviation, as there always is in real data, but you can see how a quadratic model could be a good way to fit this data. So part A, we need to plot the data. We've done that. Part B says to find a quadratic model that fits this data. So let's go back into the stat menu and scroll over to the calc menu and we're looking for quadratic regression. So we'll scroll down and select that one or hit the five key. And again, as long as we've entered the X's in the first list and the Y's in the second list, there's nothing to change in this menu. So we can just scroll down to calculate and hit enter. And it gives us the values for the A, B, and C, the coefficients of X squared, X, and the constant, or in our case, we're using T instead of x, but it's the same principle. So for us, the model would be p sub t equals negative 0.008 t squared plus 0.746 t plus 13.469, just reading off those values of a, b, and c. Okay, so we've plotted the data, we've found the model shown there in part b, and then part c and d ask us to make some predictions. So part c, we're going to predict what gas mileage is expected at 62 miles per hour and then at 90 miles per hour. So we're given the values for the speed, for x or for t in our case, and then we're going to make predictions about the gas mileage, the output, the piece of t in our case, which means we just need to plug in 62 and 90 into our model. So for the first one, we'll plug in 62 and we get an answer of about 29 miles per gallon. For the second one, we plug in 90, and we get about 16 miles per gallon. So we can make our prediction for each speed about 30 miles per gallon and about 16 miles per gallon. Then the question asks, which of these predictions is likely to be more reliable? And in general, the first one is likely to be more reliable because if you look at the data, a speed of 62 miles per hour fits within the range of speeds that we know about. 
speeds that we've measured. The 90 miles per hour is outside of that range. It would be way up here. And it's not something that we've measured, not anything in that range. So it's less likely that that will be a reliable one. The 62 miles per hour is called interpolation because it's within the range of data that we've made measurements for. The 90 is called extrapolation because it's beyond what we've seen. So the prediction at 62 miles per hour is likely to be more reliable. Without knowing anything more specific, we can make that judgment already. For the last part, we want to predict now in the opposite direction. We're given a mileage, and we want to figure out what speeds are likely to produce that mileage. So for part D, we actually need to go back to the calculator, and we'll plot this model that we've been given, and we'll plot the straight line of y equals 28, and we'll see where the intersections are. So back here at the calculator, first we need to plot our model, and then we need to plot y equals 28. So under y equals, now we're going to type in our model, which was negative 0.008t squared, but we'll use x here, and this key here right next to the alpha button, x squared plus 0.746x plus 13.469. And then we'll also graph the straight line y equals 28. And we're going to look for where the intersections of those two things are. So if we graph these, notice how that quadratic model fits our data. We can see that visually that it seems to match up well. And then this straight line, we can already read off that there's going to be two intersection points, two speeds that are likely to produce that gas mileage. And you could probably guess roughly where it is based on looking at the, the graph, but we'll use the intersect option that's built in to find a more precise answer. So that's going to be under this calc menu, which is the second option on the trace key. So we'll hit second calc, and the intersect option is number five. So we can scroll down and select that. And this asks us where to look for the intersection. So notice the blinking cursor that we can scroll around to find the intersection. Now, since we need to find both intersections, first we're going to scroll over to the left. So I'll hit the left key and hold that down to move that cursor close to the left one. It doesn't have to be right at it, but close by, and then just hit enter three times, and it finds that first intersection at x equals 27.7 and y equals 28. So the first speed is 27.7 miles per hour. And then we can do the same thing with the other intersection. So hit second trace again, and then select number five for the intersect option. And now scroll over closer to the right hand intersection. Again, it doesn't have to be right on it, but nearby. Hit enter three times. And that turns out to be when X is about 65.5 miles per hour. So the two speeds that are likely to produce a mileage of 28 miles per gallon are 27.7 and 65.5 miles per hour.